Hello, it's Lisa here. Welcome back to another episode of the Wild Heart Diaries. So glad you're here. Today we're going to be talking about what's in your toxic puddle. This is going to be a series of episodes because there's quite a lot of things that could be in your toxic puddle. So before we start that, I have a couple of things I want to say. A little bit of housekeeping. (laughs) Housekeeping announcements. Thank you everyone who's given me feedback on the podcast. I've had some really lovely emails from people. Um, In particular, I wanted to share one with you from an old client who who got in touch and said, do you remember me? I always remember all my clients. I might not remember their names, but I remember their stories and their faces. And um, this was a lady who I worked with about four years ago. I'm not going to name her so she can remain anonymous, but she just said that my insights and wisdoms and advice four years ago set her on a journey and um, she's moved to off grid to the country and has been learning EFT and um yeah she's an EFT practitioner so EFT is the tapping that, I, that I've mentioned before um emotional freedom technique it's called and it's brilliant for pattern interrupts and for dealing with emotional flashbacks and negative thought patterns and beliefs I am a huge fan of it and I've referenced it in a, in other episodes so if you go if you listen back and check in the show notes there'll be links to help you but um she f- she finished off her email by saying I just wanted to let you know that you were probably the spark to all of this and you took me inwards which I hadn't done previously in therapy it didn't start a flame instantly but when the right thing came along and the universe aligned me I knew what I needed I trusted my intuition to set myself on this new path and it's changed everything for me my soul my kids my husband and our whole family and I can't wait to listen to more episodes of the world heart diaries good luck with this you're sprinkling more magic isn't that nice but th- this is how it happens just by being curious and opening yourself up to other people and new things a whole you know there's doors to new worlds places people things that we've that we've never never known before and that's where the magic happens we just have to be open to it so thank you to all those of you who are providing feedback and thank you for listening i appreciate it If you want to leave a review for me on iTunes, that's also really helpful because it just makes sure that the people that need to see it will see it. Because obviously there's a gazillion podcasts in the world. Why should they listen to mine? But if people who are listening like it, then that that's um, that's helpful. I think I think we I think we are guided online in the online world by reviews and validation and feedback from from our peers or other people that are going through the same experience uh, I also wanted to just pick up on the um I've had a few comments back about what I said about ADHD so I was talking about the fact that there's an overlap between complex trauma and ADHD and I was actually saying that I felt that a lot of ADHD was misdiagnosed Now, I can't diagnose you all individually, and I think I did say that on the episode, but I just want to reiterate that I'm not qualified to assess anyone. I see patterns in my work, and I'm talking from my personal experience. And remember, I have CPTSD, and it looks like ADHD. And after I had done that episode and had a few few emails, I found a video on YouTube by a guy called... um, I think he's called Patrick Tierney. I think that's how you say his name. That's Irish, isn't it? I'll I'll link to him in the show notes. But he made a video talking about the difference between ADHD and CPTSD. And basically, I mean, it's well worth watching if you've got time. But from what I could gather, the difference is abuse. Now, as we go on to talk about the toxic puddle, and that's why I'm addressing this today, a lot of what's in the toxic puddle is abuse, but it's not seen it's felt with the heart and with the soul it's psychological and emotional abuse it's covert abuse domestic violence happens behind closed doors it's not always bruises on the outside of the body and you would be surprised how much bullying 
goes on in families. You would be surprised, let me tell you. Families that look good on paper, in fact, families that look really perfect on the outside, that are Instagram perfect. I worry most about those families because real life is messy. I'm not saying all those families have got abuse going on behind closed doors. I'm not generalising, we're not talking in absolutes. It's always different for everyone. I respect everyone's experience is different um, and very unique to them. But he did say the main difference was abuse. That was the the differing factor. And he was also talking about the need, and I really liked the end of his video because he was saying it's really important that we don't pathologise and label everything because we're dehumanising people. And I said that also on my last couple of episodes that people cannot be defined by a list of checkboxes on the internet by a lady with ginger hair, a.k.a. me. And he was saying it's so important that we get to tell our stories and for someone to witness our struggle, our suffering and say, I get it, to validate our experience. We call that the enlightened witness. And um, and that's what I feel that I do with the teens that I work with now and possibly with the children that I worked with before. It takes one person just to see you in the darkness and sit with you in the darkness. And whilst that may not fix and change the darkness that you're sitting in, it... Um, it really heals. So let's get into today's episode. What is your toxic puddle? We all have a toxic puddle. <laughs> it's basically the energy that you're living in. And it's, as I've said, it's that which we cannot see, can only be felt with the heart. And everything is made of energy, right? And you're a wild heart, so you're going to feel it. You're going to feel it the most. You are going to feel the nuances of the energy in the room, in the puddle, in the environment, in the relationship, in the family system. Everything is made of energy. Nature is energy. The season's changing. Whatever grows our hair and fingernails is energy. Our spirit is energy. Our emotions are energy. Our thoughts are energy. It's energy. Objects are even energy. They're just vibrating at a different speed, so they're much more solid aren't they but everything is made of energy and you and I in particular are made of energy and I used to teach this to children um, at the workshop so if you've read my book and you've downloaded the free activity book that comes with it for people that are uh, holding group sessions for children and you can do this with adults as well it's fascinating I teach children about the connection between their mind and their body and I get them to muscle test the energy of their thoughts. So we test using um, kinesiology, muscle testing, what thoughts make us strong and what thoughts make us weak. We don't discount weak thoughts. We challenge them and we try and transfer them into more positive thoughts. But then we don't go into the realms of toxic positivity where we say, I'm fine. You know, like Ross from Friends. Have you seen that episode on Ross from Friends where... I think Rachel's going out with Joey and um, they have them round for dinner and he's just really drunk on cocktails and he burns his hands making the fajitas. It's a very good one. Oh, I love Friends. I love Friends. It's so good. It makes me laugh. It's a, it's a comfort watch, isn't it? So yeah, I used to teach the this energetic link and I also used to teach the energetic link between mother and child for children that had separation anxiety. So I would say there's a energetic cord from your heart to mummy's. You grew in mummy's tummy. That cannot be broken. But when you're away from her, that gets stretched. So when you get worried, when you're away from her, that's just the energetic cord being stretched. But when you come back together again, that cord is still as strong as ever. And then I talk to the parent about keeping that cord strong and channeling that love to the child in a way that um, feels like love to that child. So... If you think about the energy that's inside of you, it must come out of you. You know, who you are is is what energetically shows up in the world. I think it was Wayne Dyer that used to say, you know, if you're full of anger and hatred then or self-loathing, then that's what will come out of you in everything you do. That's your passive aggressive snarky people, you know, who who seem eternally angry with everyone or pissed off with the world. 
Um, so he was sort of saying, if you squeeze an orange juice, then orange juice, if you squeeze an orange, then an orange juice comes out. Champagne doesn't come out. Lemon juice doesn't come out. Coca-Cola doesn't come out. So who you are when you're squeezed, when you're put under pressure <laughs> is what comes out of you. And that's the energy of you. You know, when we're born and we're babies, what comes out of us is just pure joy and love and innocence and wonderment. And then life happens, doesn't it? And so when those things are held inside of us, that's how we show up in the world. And we are all responsible for our energy. Sometimes we didn't create the energy that's inside of us. We didn't cause it. We didn't create it. We're not responsible for it, for the, for the creation of it. It wasn't our fault. But we are responsible for healing ourselves and only we can heal ourselves. And it's very common when you're a, when you've had childhood trauma that you're waiting for someone to come along and rescue you or save you. You're waiting for mummy and daddy to show up and come and take you home. And it's a really brutal truth that they aren't coming. If they weren't there when you were a child, they're not going to be coming now. This is really sad, isn't it? That's a really hard one to to hear. And so it's probably worth saying on the flip side of that, we're not responsible for other people's energy. But growing up, we have we may have had to have been overly responsible in order to survive. You know, if a child grows up in a rageful, chaotic, unpredictable environment, that doesn't feel safe. So a child couldn't admit to itself that that parent wasn't safe because it needed that parent to survive. So it would have internalized a lot of that, made it, made it its fault. So that energy, so that energy in you and around you includes the physical space and routines that you have on a daily basis. So the energy that you give to the day also includes your emotional and mental energy. So those suppressed emotions that I've talked about. And I do think a lot of illness is created in the body from emotional pain and trauma. That's why it's called dis-ease. It's dis-ease in the body. And that comes from Louise Hay's teachings. I've talked about Louise Hay on here before. Look her up. It's very powerful teachings. It makes you see things in a very different way. It's empowering because it gives you back your power. You're not defined by a chronic illness or your aches and pains. Your body is just speaking to you and it's up to you if you listen to it or not. And then the, the mental energy is the faulty thinking styles. So when we have trauma, trauma wilds our brain for danger. So we often have faulty thinking styles. That also includes the relationships we have with other people and it also includes our history, our childhood and what was happening in our family of origin, which can go back generations. So, yes, that's 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 what that's what the toxic puddle is made up of. And so why is this important to to a wild heart? Well, let's just take a moment to do some journaling questions because I've got lots of questions to ask you. Because if you're really sensitive um, to your environment and you feel what's going on in your environment, in that those subtle energies, those really subtle energies. And I think I said before, I often wonder, am I an HSP? Am I a highly sensitive person? Is that my temperament? Was I born that way? Or was my personality created out of the fact that I had to be so hyper vigilant. I learned how to read micro expressions. I learned how to mind read and anticipate other people's needs from a really young age in order to keep myself safe. Which came first, the chicken or the egg? It's that kind of thing. But I think through journaling and, and being with yourself and, and understanding yourself, you might be able to work out if that's one or the other. So let me ask you these questions. Do you ever feel overwhelmed by how much there is to do? do? Do you feel tired after spending time with people? Do you get peopled out? And maybe that's only certain people. Perhaps there's certain relationships that take a lot of energy out of you. Do you worry about what other people think? Do you get anxious about, like, perhaps you do... Um, 
you know you, you have those kind of moments where you're driving home after you've been out for the day with a friend and you think oh why did I say that and I shouldn't have done that and I talked too much and I should have listened more and yada 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 and then that internal chatter starts to shame you and make you wrong for what you did that's a kind of social anxiety really do you get stressed by loud noises or mess that's that that can be really overwhelming and triggering are you unable to rest until everything's all tidied and orderly? And are you consumed by worry or problems that you can't fix yours or other people? Like, do you get caught on a loop in your mind, perhaps playing the what if game? What if I did that? What if I said that? Could I do this? Could I do that? So you're focused on fixing problems and Yes, that's a sign that you're, that's a trauma response because that's a sign that you're escaping the body and not feeling the feelings that you feel around the situation and you're just trying to think your way out of it and sometimes that doesn't work. <laughs> Do you have lots of lame duck friends? Like, are you taking on projects instead of friendships that need people that need help instead of having mutually loving relationships and connections with people? If you were parentified, so parentified means if you had to be the adult when you were a child, before you, you grew up, before you should have done, then perhaps your self-esteem is based on doing things and helping and being a caretaker. Hello, why do you think I do this for a living? I like to think that I do it in a, more in a more boundaried way now. I'm, I'm not just uh, randomly giving out unsolicited advice to people that don't need it. I believe that people are listening to this podcast, want to help, want help and are trying to learn and are listening because they want to be here. And the same with my clients, they're paying me for that. And so it's a, it's an equal energy exchange. But before I recognize that that was part of my role, I would always feel like everything was my responsibility. So are you overly responsible? You know, in a relationship, it's 50 50, isn't it? Everything isn't down to you. So, is your focus outside of you on others? So, their problem becomes your problem. Their feelings become your feelings. If you're all right, I'm all right. I see this a lot with parents and children. It's very unhealthy because it puts pressure on us to feel okay. Uh, it doesn't make it safe to express what we sometimes call negative or uncomfortable feelings like anger or anxiety or fear or sadness. Are you hypervigilant? Because <laughs> you're, because your five senses when you're an HSP, so your sound, sight, smell, taste and touch are totally tuned into your environment all the time. And of course that's going to become too much. That's going to become exhausting to feel like I used to explain it like I was switched on all the time. So when I was with people, I was switched on. And when I was in my worst parts of my PTSD, it's post-traumatic stress disorder, I did not want to be around anyone. I isolated myself because I didn't have the bandwidth and the energy to be switched on all the time. Um, and, and then obviously learning how to set boundaries and those mental and emotional boundaries are the hardest ones. Um, yeah, that's, that's a work in progress for me. Do you have difficult high maintenance relationships with one or both of your parents? You know, they, they depend on you or what I call, um, an H an HCP, sorry for all the acronyms, a high conflict person. So we hear people talking about these online. It's become a bit pop culture -y, but we talk about narcissists and people with personality disorders, abusers. Um, we ca I call those high conflict personalities. So unless you're doing exactly what they want, it all ends in tantrums and tears. And it seems quite impossible to have a relationship with them. Are you co-parenting with someone like that? Blimey, it's not really co-parenting. It's actually called counter-parenting because it's it's impossible and will drive you insane if you don't have a specific way of dealing with that um do you ever say i don't know but it's very likely that you do know because we do know but we don't feel safe enough to 
to tell the truth, maybe to ourselves, maybe to the people around us. So are you like a sponge that absorbs the energetic vibration around you? So everyone has like an aura, it's called an aura, which is like your energetic field. And you can have your photograph taken of it. I've had my photograph taken before at one of those holistic fairs. And the different colours mean different things. So I, I've had my photograph taken where one whole side of my photo was in darkness. So the left side, I think, is is the energy that you're sitting in. And the right side is the energy that you're emitting to other people. I think that's right. So on the left side, it was all really black. And then on the right side, you could see how green and turquoise and indigo were trying to come through. So indigo is believed to be the indigo child, which I've talked about in one of the last episodes. Other labels for wild hearts, I think that episode's called. The green is the teacher, the healer, the nurturer. And the turquoise is the writer, the communicator in me the talker, the chatterbox. <laughs> and then you can see, I think it was maybe 18 months later, I went and had the same photograph taken again. And you can see that that black has now disappeared. It was like a blackness that was surrounding me. Uh, I assume that's the energy of the generational trauma that I was sitting in and the pain and the loneliness and the depression and the anxiety and you can see that had shifted and that green had like filled up the whole had gone around my had gone around my whole body so that was amazing it was amazing to watch and it was also really powerful to see how because sometimes when you're healing i don't know if you find this but you just think oh f f f s like <laughs> I'm here again. I'm back here again. And why am I going through this again? I thought we dealt with this and I've worked so hard on this. And why do I feel like I'm in it all the time? And why do I look over there and see that person? And they seem so happy and sorted with their lives. Well, it's quite possible that they're not dealing with complex trauma. It's quite possible that, you know, that, that, that they had a different start in life. I don't, I don't think, I don't think they say, don't they, that comparison is the thief of joy. Don't compare yourself to other people. That's why I don't really like going on social me media. Because if I'm not having a day where I feel particularly confident or good about myself, you know, I can only, I'll only end up feeling worse when I see, you know, Sally Ann's perfectly manicured Instagram squares and how, you know, with her 2.4 children and her really cute labradoodle and her gorgeous husband and her all her lovely dishes that she's cooking for dinner and she's going to exercise classes and I mean I don't you know no no and how hard is it for her to maintain that image bloody exhausting I reckon but but maybe she doesn't know that yet and it's paying her bills isn't it so perhaps she's prepared to put that energy into it but I think it comes at a loss or a cost it comes at a cost Giving of yourself in that way all the time leads to burnout. I don't think we were built as humans to live like that. I don't, I don't think that's who we are. So there's quite a few questions in there for you to journal on today. They're your journal prompts. And I'm, I'm going to leave it there today as an introduction to the toxic puddle. And I'm then going to go on in other episodes to cover off those other elements. So we're going to look at physical space and routines. We're going to look at emotional and mental energy. We're going to look at your relationships. And we're going to look at your history, your childhood and your family of origin stuff like the intergen intergenerational trauma. So the stuff that your family has been dealing with over the generations. It gets passed on. And you know that. I think if you also look about, if you're a woman listening to this, and I'm assuming, I might not be right, that mostly women are listening to this, um, or people who identify as a woman, I I feel like if you look at how women have been treated over the years and how, you know, that's changed, how women have gone to being like the homemaker and little her indoors to having a voice and to having their own careers and doing all the things you will have been part you know whether you were traumatized or not as a child you will have been part of that transition and you will have stepped up 
and been that woman. And I don't know how the men in your family have responded to that. A healthy man, oh, need to drop the microphone there. A healthy man will encourage that, will want you to rise up and be the best version of yourself. But some men, and I can think of quite a few old, what I call old school men, or people that were born in the 40s, will be threatened by that will be threatened by the fact that women are intelligent and they are capable and they can run businesses and they can do some of the things that men can do. Equally, men can step more into their feminine energy and I hope we're going to see more of that where men get more comfortable with their feelings, that men cry on the football pitch, that men hug and kiss each other and say, are you all right, mate? That would be great because that would really help the suicide rates with men, wouldn't it? And, and and for all the people that feel like they that it's not safe for them to express their, their true feelings. So let's leave it there today. Thank you so much for tuning in. I look forward to diving into the toxic, well, not diving into the toxic puddle. We don't want to do that. We're sitting in it, man. It's horrible. <laughs> to examining, exploring with curiosity your toxic puddle together next time. So until then... Stay wild, choose love, so much love to you. Bye.